Meyer says his department chose this model of camera so officers could use it quickly and easily. To turn it on, all you do is flip it open. Reporting live from Fulton, Katie Moeller, KMU 8 News. An anti-Islamic group is planning to protest outside mosques across the nation, and Columbia's own mosque is preparing for the possible impact. You need to change lanes as far away from that vehicle as safely possible. What do you guys think about the fruits and vegetables here? They give it a thumbs up. I'm in the KOMU8 Storm Patrol car right now, but today we're not talking about the weather. This morning, Missouri lawmakers discussed a bill that would make it illegal for the state to require officers to wear body cameras. That bill would also keep video collected by any body cameras closed to the public. So this afternoon, I visited one police department in mid-Missouri to see if body cameras are more of a help or a hindrance to their work. To demonstrate just how the body cameras work, Sergeant Camp pulled me over for a mock traffic stop. You can see he's uh, asking me for my license and registration. According to Moberly Police spokeswoman Major Kenna Neese, she said she thinks he roamed Moberly for so long because he could always count on people to give him a little extra food. The few, the proud, but what does it actually take to become a United States Marine? I visited the Marine Corps Recruit Depot in San Diego to see how recruits from our area are doing. Turns out the first 24 hours of training, it's a bit of a culture shock. The moment new recruits arrive at the Marine Corps Depot, training begins. Under the watchful eyes of the drill instructors, these young men will spend the next 12 weeks together learning to be Marines. But tonight, known as receiving night, it's all about stripping away the recruits' past lives so they can begin their new ones. This recruit was thinking he's feeling a lot of anxiety, uh, stress, uh, nervousness, um, but excited at the same time. First, they give up their possessions. They give up their hair. And then they say goodbye to their families. The recruit's mother wasn't expecting it. She was, this sounded like she was asleep. So whenever she woke up, she was kind of like, what, what's going on? Levi Clark, a recruit from Dixon, Missouri, says you aren't allowed to veer from the pre-written script during your final phone call. This crew wasn't able to respond to any of her questions. He had to say, hi, this recruit has arrived safely at MCRD San Diego. Uh, next time I will contact you will be within two weeks in letter form. A week 11 recruit, Levi survived the chaos of receiving night. He's almost completed all the physical and mental training that's required of Marines. This recruit definitely feels a lot more confidence um, in himself. Uh, feels more, his physical ability to perform difficult tasks has increased. But the toughest test for recruits, the crucible, is still to come. A 46-mile hike that includes food and sleep deprivation. The Crucible is the last obstacle new recruits face before becoming Marines. I took to the streets today to ask mid-Missourians where they think their federal tax dollars should go. I heard a lot of different opinions, but everyone could agree on one thing. They were surprised about what their money was spent on in 2014. If it were up to you, what would you spend federal tax dollars on? The military? Health care, education? 12, 13, 14, and 15. 15 I'll put on education. Or maybe veteran benefits? Veteran benefits, yeah. In reality, there are two big areas the federal government spent your money on in 2014. That was the military with 27 cents of every dollar and health care with 26 cents of every dollar. What about interest on federal debt? And let's put this over here at that 30. No, this interest on debt, that's not, I don't think that should be our problem right now. Maybe not, but the federal government spent more than 15 cents of each tax dollar paying off debt. But not every area received that amount of support from federal tax dollars. International affairs, environment and energy, transportation and housing and community all received less than 2% of federal tax dollars each in 2014. So this pie chart shows exactly how much money the federal government spent per tax dollar last year. For example, the federal government spent only two and a half cents per dollar on education. As you can see, that's a pretty small slice of this pie here. For more information on how the federal government spent your 2014 tax dollars, go to KOMU.com. 
Rodney Griffin is coming home, but it isn't the way his family and friends hoped for years that he would. I visited Centralia in Mexico today to talk with his sister-in-law and his friends from the Centralia VFW. They told me finding Griffin after all this time has been a bittersweet experience. This is when he's in a Jeep in Vietnam. Doris Griffin says she and her family have never given up hope that her brother-in-law, Rodney Griffin, would return from Vietnam. It's been 45 years and it's been a long time. That long wait is over now. Griffin will return, but his homecoming brings mixed emotions. I'm, I'm glad that we found out, because I always wondered what would happen if we'd all passed away and there wasn't anybody down the road. Steve Gordon was part of the recovery operation that searched for Griffin after his helicopter went down in Cambodia. Sad. I think it was more sad to me than happy, just because there was always a little hope that he would pop up and, and be mad at us because we didn't come to get him. Doris Griffin says even after Rodney was officially declared deceased, she didn't want to believe it. We never accepted it. We really, we wouldn't. I mean, they made it official, but we didn't accept it. The town of Centralia certainly hasn't forgotten Rodney Griffin. In addition to naming this street we're on after him, they also have this memorial right here that has the day he went missing in action in 1970. Daryl Reeves, who grew up with Rodney Griffin, says it almost didn't feel real that Rodney was missing for so long. I always thought he'd just come bouncing through the door someday, you know, and it has happened. Gordon says Rodney's memory inspires the members of the Centralia VFW even now. That's why, as a rule, most of us live every day pretty far. Doris Griffin says that's the way Rodney would have wanted it. Rodney was awarded the Purple Heart for valor in combat, but sometimes an award just isn't enough. We'd rather have Rodney instead of the medals. The Centralia VFW is meeting tonight to discuss raising funds in Rodney Griffin's memory to help pay for a funeral when his remains return. It's found on Westminster, uh, it's like 150 or 1600 block. Sergeant Billy Camp has patrolled the streets of Fulton for almost five and a half years. But since this summer, he's had one more piece of equipment to put on every day, a body camera. I typically turn the body camera on, that way everything from beginning to end is documented on video. Fulton Police Department Support Services Manager Sergeant Jimmy Culbertson says body cameras keep everyone, both citizens and policemen, honest. We certainly look at it as uh, uh, to our advantage because uh, uh, false claims go down dramatically when, when cameras are involved. Camp has personal experience with that. I a traffic stop and uh, issued the driver a summons, I believe it was for speed. Uh, either later that day or the next day, she called and spoke to my uh, supervisor, claiming that I was rude and said things that were never said. Camp and his supervisors reviewed the recording and determined the allegations were false. To demonstrate just how the body cameras work, Sergeant Camp pulled me over for a mock traffic stop. You can see he's uh, asking me for my license and registration, and as, as you can tell, uh, the camera catches everything that goes on. While my mock traffic stop video is pretty tame, some lawmakers are concerned about privacy issues if the public can easily access police video. As, as police officers, these guys respond to all variety of calls, and cat in the tree, as well as death investigations, and, and a lot of that is not, not really uh, all that pretty and, and not something that needs to be uh, dispersed. As the law stands now, the public has access to police video under Missouri Open Records Law. If the bill passes, police departments could not release video without a court order. For example, the Columbia Police Department says it had 21 open record requests for police video over the past two years. If the bill passes, people who want that video would have to go to a judge. Seventh grader Ethan West says all he did was doodle in his notebook, but he says one Moberly Middle School teacher didn't like what he wrote, gay pride. He says she took the papers away and sent them to the counselor. I spoke with Moberly High Schoolers today who are making an outside-the-box effort to protest what Ethan says happened. Moberly High Schoolers say they knew today the time for just talking had passed. A lot of students at the high school are putting duct tape over their mouth and refusing to speak for the day to protest what's happened. A teacher at my school told me that I could sit down and do whatever, and so I did, and I wrote gay pride on a piece of paper, and then she took it away from me and folded it up, and then the next day I got sent down to the counselor's office for writing it. Ethan says he didn't really understand the counselor's advice. She said, like, she didn't want me to advertise myself, in which I don't really know what she meant about that. He says the counselor tried to explain the teacher's behavior. Said that she's old, so she might be so she might not know how to handle it, it still made me feel bad. 
That's why Callie Patton brought duct tape to school to let Ethan know he wasn't alone. I feel like Ethan should not have been treated like that, and I don't want him to think that there's anything wrong with him because being gay is not wrong at all. Student Angel Savage says for her, the protest is about standing up for her friends. I have so many friends that are like gay or trans or just not straight, and I'm tired of them getting hurt. I asked the Moberly School District for a comment today. The superintendent explained she cannot speak about individual teachers, but says the district doesn't allow discrimination based on sexual orientation. The current Moberly Middle School handbook does not list sexual orientation under its non-discrimination policy. But Patton is still optimistic that things can change for the better. We may not be able to change America, but we can change Moberly. And I just want to be happy with that. And I want my kids to grow up thinking they can be whoever they want to be. Patton says when she wore duct tape over her mouth today, one teacher told her to take it off. But she says another teacher handed her a note reminding her that she had a right to protest as long as it was not disruptive. He almost didn't survive, but today he's walking without any help. I visited Troy Frakes in Eldon where he's been taking the long road to recovery one step at a time. Yeah, I've been wanting to. Troy Frakes doesn't need the help of a walker or cane to get around anymore. But it's been a long road to walking unassisted since his accident last September. Frakes was investigating a possible stolen vehicle when he was hit by an oncoming car, a Chevy Silverado. I was told that uh, I was hit by, struck by a vehicle. It was pretty extensive, I guess, from everything that I was told. Uh, that's all I remember up to until I woke up about a month and a half, about a month later. And I was told later on that uh, they did not think that I was going to make it. Frake's accident is not an isolated one. MoDOT reported nine people died in 2014 due to being hit by a vehicle on the job. Frake survived, but getting released from the hospital was only the beginning of the healing process. The right leg was, it was pretty much, it was pretty much shot. After 90 minutes of therapy, three days a week, Frakes can now walk unassisted. I've come uh, a very long way with the leg. I mean, it's, it's doing great. Occupational therapist Katie Kelly says Frakes still has mobility issues with his left arm. So I want him doing um, things that he needs to be able to do in his daily life, um, stacking cones, Looks like stacking cones, um, but it's, you know, picking up a glass, taking a drink of water. It Kelly says after seeing what Frakes has endured, she always obeys the move over law. Current Missouri move over law says if you see a stopped emergency vehicle, you need to change lanes as far away from that vehicle as safely possible. If you cannot safely change lanes, Missouri move over law requires you to slow down as much as possible while you move past that vehicle. Retired Columbia police officer Rob Kiesling was also hit by a car that didn't move over while directing traffic years ago. Unfortunately, the vehicle just kept coming at us and kept swerving over closer, closer to us, and it, it actually caught my leg and flipped me up onto the hood of the car. Kiesling says he returned to work in about a week. Frakes was not so lucky. He says one of the most difficult parts of his accident is the financial burden of being unemployable. He says he receives only about $200 a week in workers' compensation. That's because Frakes was working two jobs as a sheriff's deputy to make ends meet, part-time in Sheridan County and full-time in Carroll County. But Frakes says he didn't become a sheriff's deputy for the money. You do it for the satisfaction of being able to help people. Therapy may not always be easy, but Frakes says he'll do whatever it takes to get back to work and helping people. Katie Moeller, KOMU 8 News, Eldon. Frake says he may need up to two more additional surgeries on his arm to regain full mobility. The Carroll County Sheriff's Department started the Troy Frakes Fund, which we've put a link to on KOMU.com. <laughs> you want more? There's no doubt Wilbur Bacon eats like a king at his new home. He loves pasta, macaroni and cheese. But he didn't always eat such gourmet meals. Wilbur Bacon roamed the town of Moberly for almost three months. As you can see right now, pot-bellied pig Wilbur Bacon is enjoying his lunch of corn and grain. According to Moberly Police spokeswoman Major Kenna Neese, she said she thinks he roamed Moberly for so long because he could always count on people to give him a little extra food. Oh yeah, saw it quite a few times crossing the road, getting there, uh, running in front of cars. That's the part that I didn't care for.
The first time Wilbur showed up at her farm, Kirkendall said he made it very clear he only stays where he wants to. We got him in the dog pen, just the very small dog pen there. Give him a little corn, shut the gate, and he was out in probably three minutes. He went right underneath of it. That didn't surprise Fred Latimer. I was an old farm boy, so yeah, we've had pigs go on the run, and they tend to like to be free after they've had a taste of it. Moberly Police said City Hall had received requests for permits from people wanting to shoot the pig during his days of freedom. Why? <laughs> I mean, what can he hurt? Maybe flowers or something like that. Latimer says there's only one way to squelch Wilbur's wanderlust. They'll keep looking for ways out. Just keep feeding him. That's just what Kirkendall plans on doing. With videographer Justin Coyle, Katie Moeller, KOMU 8 News, Moberly.